everybody, Dan Rubino here with Windows Central. We're doing a special segment of Ask Dan today with Microsoft's Joe Belfiore. I'm not sure he needs an introduction, but just in case, what is your position now in Microsoft, actually? Uh, I work in the Windows team, and my team builds and defines all the, the user experience for Windows 10. So I guess that's a nice segue into a question we're asked a lot, which is, why creators update? So we've had two this year, and some people have had questions like, why all of a sudden this focus on creators? What do you guys see as the, the main impetus and reason for that happening? Yeah, I, you know, you, you said sudden, yep. and at least from my point of view, it doesn't feel so sudden, although the name is kind of recent. Sure. Um, I think a big part of, of our thinking here is this combination of what's happening culturally and how people use technology. Mm -hmm. And in the old days, you would think about being productive, and that meant like writing a document and printing it out or something. Right. But today, people are using technology for all kinds of creative endeavors. You know, People are making interesting videos, they're posting, they're trying to be artistic in the way they take photos and post them on services like Facebook and Instagram. They're interested in building Minecraft worlds, they're writing documents, and so we think that technology has enabled this super wide range of ways for people to express themselves mm -hmm. and communicate. And, and that's kind of a cultural thing that's unlocked by a lot of the new devices that people have. And because we focus on the PC so much, um, we think that there's a way that we can take advantage of people's desire to be creative and to express themselves in ways that are unlocked even better on the PC than on other devices. And so where you've got a bigger screen and you've got the, the dexterity and control of a mouse and a keyboard, we want to help make those things work better. We want to let people do things like use a pen to annotate their videos. We want to help people be able to manipulate objects in 3D and then view them in mixed reality. And so it feels to us like a great opportunity to line up with what we see people doing already and enable them to do it even better. And so I guess that segues nicely into going to 2018. We're going to still see more creator stuff, right? This is not really an ending program with Windows 10. Yeah, we, we were trying to think about lots of the ways in which people use PCs in conjunction with other devices, for sure, um, and help them be more creative. And so there's features that are coming as part of our wave, things that we've shown before, things like Timeline, as an example, mm -hmm. that help people get back to the tasks that they're working on and be more efficient and more effective in whatever their creative activity is. And now let's talk a little bit about the future in terms of going into 2018, 19, and, and hardware and everything. What do you see as, I guess, the next bend in the curve is an expression I like to hear a lot, which is the, the next big wave of technology, where all this stuff is going. And on a more personal level, what do you find like really interesting yourself? Um, well, it's interesting because obviously at Microsoft, there's a ton of super cool bend in the curve technology that we're working on. Yeah. Um, you know, And to be a little repetitive about it, Mixed reality is a huge thing. What can we do with mixed reality to give people unique new experiences to help them be creative or effective or to be entertained? Um, AI is a huge one. What can we do with machine learning to infer information about the way people are trying to get work done? So all of those are things we're working on. Um, but you did ask like, if there's anything that I like personally am excited about. And I have to admit, I saw a demo. It was, this was not a Microsoft thing. Um, this small company called Control Labs is building some technology that you can put on your wrist as a hardware device, and it detects the signals from the nerves in your arm. Right. And I saw a demo of someone wearing this, able to control a game of asteroids without moving their hand. And I felt like, actually, I had this experience the first time Alex Kipman let me get a look at what would eventually become HoloLens. I, I put my head on this chin rest on this big bench, and in front of me I saw this holographic lobster, and I felt like, oh my gosh, I've seen the future, and everything could change. Mm -hmm. And I think that this brain-machine interface, sure. if we can, as an industry, if we can build it in a way that's simple and compelling, man, it could change so many things, like typing on tablets could be better, and controlling mm -hmm. games could be better, and the way people might connect with these devices could be even better. So, you know, it's one of the great things about working at Microsoft and in the industry is bumping into new tech technologies like that and imagining where they're going to go and 
and it for sure keeps my job in life interesting. It's awesome. So you heard it here, Connect 3.0 confirmed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but there is a lot of exciting stuff that's coming from Microsoft. Of course, paid attention Windows Central. We'll be talking about some of these new features. Thank you, Joe, for joining yeah. us. It was very exciting. Yeah, good to see you. Great. Take care, everybody. All right, one take, right? Cool. Now, now Mark's going to be like, I forgot to record. Oh, it wasn't recording. <laughs> <laughs>